Hello, Ms. Mukama, you're on mute. Thank you. Okay, I was hi. saying. Hi. Yes, hi. Can you start from the beginning? Because you were on mute, so we didn't hear anything. Oh, okay. I said today we'll start on the chain rule. Right. And we said um, the chain rule is used to differentiate a composite function. Right. And sometimes it's called the function of the function or the inner and the outer function. Okay. Then suppose you have a function y equals 3x plus 4 all to the power 10. Right. Okay, if, if you have a function like this, I think you, you have an inside function, the outside function, right? And um, I'll let the, in, the inner function, which is the inside function, I'll, to be a new variable like u. So if, if u is the inner function, that means u is equal to 3x plus 4. And then, we have the outside function, which is y equals u to the power 10, right? So if you have a function like this, you can write this function into this variable, the inner function and the outer function, and you let the inner function to be this and the outside outer function to be, okay? Then I said, remember those, those um, rules we had, the power rule, the exponential rule, and the logarithm rule. We were differentiating something like this. If it's the power rule, we had um, maybe f at x equals maybe uh, x to the power n, right? And we have f at x equals lin, lin x, and we had f at x equals e to the power x, right? Um, if you have a function like this, the, okay, the first thing that you need to do is to write this function in the form of, it's either this or this or this or this one, right? You have to write that function in such a way that it forms um, it's in the form of this term or this one or this one. Okay. That's how you choose your inner function and the outer function. You see here we had y equals 3x plus 4 to the power 10, right? And we the, this this function it's not in, in the in any of these of this is not in the form of any of these three function. Right, which is x to the power n, lin n, e x. So you introduce a variable uh, which will help you to write that function in the form of any of these three. Right? Okay, we let u to be this function, which is the inner function. And now our outer function is u to the power 10. It's in this form, right? Okay, again, suppose you are given Excuse me, Ms. a Kula. function would y you... equals, yes? Would you please share your screen? I am sharing the screen. It means blank. All of you, you can't see my screen? No, we, we can't can see it. it. We can see it. Oh, okay, thank you. Okay, suppose you have a function y equals e to the power 30, 30 x squared plus 10x minus 2, right? I said you need to, to, to write um, the, the given function into the form of any of the three functions, 
right? You see, the, this function is closer to, to this one, right? Meaning we have to write this function to be in this form. And if this function is closer to this one, we have e to the power something, right? And we have e to the power x. We can let everything here to be one variable so that it will be in this term. Because you see here, it's e to the power one variable, which is x. So this means our u here, which is the inner function, would be u equals 30x squared plus 10x minus 2. And then your outer function is now y equals e to the power u. You see, it's in the form of these three functions now. Again, suppose you are given something like, um, suppose you are given a function y equals one over 30 x squared, plus 10x minus 2, right? Again, you need to write this function in, in the form of these three. Any of these three, just, just one. You see, the, this we said we, we have um, exponential ex, a, a, a rules of exponent, which is if, okay, which is, we said 1 over n is equal to n to the power minus 1, right? Meaning this function, we can write this function as in 30x squared plus 10x minus 2, everything to the power minus 1, right? So we have y equals 30x squared plus 10x minus 2. Now, we can compare that function to these three functions, right? If we look at these three functions and, and this function, we have a function to the power minus n, meaning, okay, you see, we have a function to the power n, meaning we have to write that, that function to be in this form, right? Meaning this, and on this term, we need to introduce a new variable and we let everything that was here to be to be the inner function, right? To be to equal to a new variable. Meaning we have u equals 30x squared plus 10x minus 2 as our new uh, as uh, our inner function, which is the new variable. And then this means our outer function would be y equals u to the power minus one. You see, now um, this function, it's in, it's in this form, as in x to the power n. Okay, after, after getting, after identifying the inner function and the outer function, right? then you, you can now use the chain rule. And remember, we said the chain rule of, of differentiating is used to differentiate a composite function, right? Meaning in, in inner function and the outer function. Suppose you have y equals um, f, of, f of u or you have u, okay, maybe u is equal to g, g of x, right? Okay, you see, this, this is the, the inner function and this is the outer function, right? Meaning the inner function was u and then whereby u is equal to g of x, like, like, like here. Right, our function was y equals 30x squared plus 10x minus 2 to the power minus 1, right? And we said we let this to be u 
and then okay we have u equals this and then this means our new function which is the outer function would be u equals would be y equals u to the power minus one right meaning um this was g at x and um this is f of u right Okay, if we have something like this, then the chain rule says the derivative of this function would be the derivative of y with respect to x will equal to the derivative of y with respect to u times the derivative of u with respect to x. Or you can write this as f prime of x equals f prime of u times g prime of x meaning um meaning the chain rule says the derivative of uh, a composite function is equal to the derivative of the outer function times the derivative of the inner function okay before we do an any example do we have questions Yes, no. Okay, guys, let's let's do an example. Applying that rule. Suppose we are given f at x as in 30 x squared plus 10 x minus 2 to the power 11. Right? I said if we have something like this, a function like this you have to write this that function in this form. It's either f at x equals x to the power n, f at x equals e x, or f at x equals lean lean x. Here we don't have we don't we we, we don't have the exponent we don't have um, the base e, and we don't have lean. We only have a function to the power, um, a fun to to the power eleven, right? To the power eight. Meaning we have to write this function in th in this form, in the first form, right? We introduce a new variable. Okay, a new variable would be will be u. So we have u equals thirty x squared plus 10x minus 2. And then if if this is equal to u, that means our f at x would be u to the power 11, right? This is our um, function now. We have f at x equals u to the power 11, whereby u is equal to 30x squared plus 10x minus 2. Right, and then we said if we have a function like this, we need to use a chain rule if we are asked to differentiate it. If like if we are asked to find the derivative of that function, right? Going back to our um, our chain rule, which is this one, says the derivative of that composite function would be the derivative of the outer function times the derivative of the inner function, right? Meaning f prime at x would be f prime of of u times um okay times u prime u prime of x okay again i said we we can still write this as the derivative of f with respect 
this is the partial derivative, it's not the derivative. Okay, it's a straight D. The derivative of F with respect to, to X will be, or will equal to the derivative, the derivative of F with respect to U times the derivative of U with respect to, to X, right? To, to, okay. For now, we only, we know F and F at, F at X. We need F prime, F prime of U and, okay, we need to differentiate F with respect to U and we need to differentiate U with respect to X and then multiply those two, okay? If, if U is equal to 30, x squared plus 10x minus 2. We need u prime, right? u prime, okay, here we can now use the power rule, right? Okay, remember, if to use the power rule, you must have something like this. Okay, let's say you have um, g at x as in x to the power n right okay let me let me write a constant here let me write a as a constant suppose you are given this function right if we are asked to differentiate this function using the power rule then that means g prime at x the derivative of this function would be a n x to the power a minus minus one so that's this is the rule that we'll use if we want to differentiate this, okay? First, here, on this term, our, our n is equal to 2 and our a is 30, right? We said the derivative of some of a function like this would be, we said it's a n x to the power n minus 1. And our a is 30, our n is 2, x to the power 2 minus 1, right? Plus our, our n here, okay, again, we are using this rule. Our n here is 1, our a is 10. So this means we have 10 times 1, x to the power 1 minus 1, right? And then we know that the derivative of a constant is 0, right? And the 2 is a constant, meaning the derivative of this will be, will have plus zero, right? Then the next step is to simplify this function. Okay, if you simplify this, you have 30 times two, this gives us 60, right? And then we have x to the power two minus one, it's just one. Then we have plus 10, which is 10 times one, and x to the power, x to the power zero. We know that any anything raised to the power zero is, is, is one, right so this means we'll have 10 times 1 which is 10. this means our u prime is equal to 60x plus 10 right this is our u prime but remember we 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 said we want u prime and f prime of u right we said we said um f f of u is equal to u to the power 11, right? We want u prime, u prime, the derivative of this function. Again, we use a power rule. Our, our a now, our a is one and our n is 11, right? If we use a power rule here, we'll have 11 u to the power 10, right? Okay. We said our um, f prime at x would be equal to f prime of u times u prime of x, right? And we said our, um, our f prime is equal to 11 u to the power 10. And our u prime is equal to 60x plus 10. So we have 60x plus plus 10. But 
Uh, our initial that 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 uh, given function, the the one we were given, didn't have you, right? We we are the one who introduced you, so we need to take to we need to write this the final answer in to be in terms of what we were given. We were given our function in terms of x, right? So we need to write this u. We need to get rid of this u, but we know that. We, we said u is equal to 30x squared plus 10x minus minus 2, right? So the next step is to substitute this u back. So this means we'll have 11 into 30x squared plus 10x minus 2 to the power 10 times 60, 60x plus, plus 10, right? So we have our f prime at x as in, as in this function. Yeah? Um, from here, because we have this bracket to the power 10, there is no need for you to simplify this further. You can just leave it here. You will get full marks. Do we have questions? Yes, no. Guys, are you there? We are here. We are here. Yes, yes. Yes, ma'am. Let's, let's do another example then. Okay, suppose we are given another function, f at x, equals e to the power 30 x squared plus 10 x minus minus 2 right suppose we are given this function and we are asked to find f prime at x right you see the, this function you can't you, you can't um, differentiate it directly right since you can't use um, a power rule or the exponential rule or the logarithm rule of differentiation. So we need to convert this function, like we need to write this function to be in this form. It's either ex, um, x to the power n, or um, lin, lin x. But you see, we can only we can only write the, this function. Okay, since we have e to the power a function, we can only convert this function, like write this function to be in this form, e to the power x, right? We need um, we need one we need one variable. It's e to the power a variable. We need we need the, to write this function as in one variable, right? So this means since we need to write this function to be one variable, we can just introduce a variable and let that variable to be this function, right? Okay, which is, we call that a variable in. Um, it's represent the inner function. So this means our inner function would be u equals 30x squared plus 10x minus 2, right? This means our f at x, f at x is now e to the power u, right? And we said if we have something like this, we need to use a chain rule. Chain rule say f prime at x is equal to the derivative of the outer function. The outer function is, um, okay, it should be the derivative of f with respect to u, right, times the inner function is u. So we have the derivative of u with respect to x, right? We only know, uh, we only know f and, and u, but we need their derivatives. Okay, we have u equals 30x squared plus 10x minus 2. Right, 
and we know we can use a power a power rule here to get u prime right and if we use a power rule this will give us 60x plus 10 right this is u prime and we have um we have f as as in e to the power u and remember the derivative of this would be okay um, f prime, if, if, if f is equal to e to the power u, then f prime would be e to the power u. Because remember, the derivative of this function, it's this function. Unless if we had um, a constant here, if we were multiplying this with a constant. But since we have e to the power u, the derivative of e to the power u would be e to the power u. Then the next thing is to plug these two down there the f prime and u prime back here, right? So this means we have each, okay, we have, f, we have f prime at x equals the derivative of f with respect to u times the derivative of u with respect to the x. We said the derivative of f with respect to u is e to the power u. Right, and we said the derivative of u with respect to x is sixty x, uh, sixty x plus plus ten. We can't leave our answer here since it it has u and our the function that you were given it was not in terms of u, so we need to replace u. We need to write u in terms of x. And we said u is equal to 30x squared plus 10x minus 2. Then we have this bracket, which is 60x plus 10. Okay. And this is our f prime, f at x, if f, f, f at x was this function was given as in this function e to the power of this function. Okay. Hello, ma'am. Can I ask a question? Yes. Okay. Uh, I just want to ask you uh, the derivative of f prime of u. Did we not get the derivative of the where you got the e e to the power u? Did we do we not get derivative for that before? multiplying it to 60 10, 60x plus 10. We said, you mean the derivative of e to the power u? Yes. Is that we also that already a derivative or? We said the derivative of e to the power u is e to the power u. Okay, why? Because the derivative, that's, that's the rule. If we are given e to the power x the derivative of e to the power x is e to the power x that's okay. that's the standard rule for exponential okay. functions okay thank you all right okay let's let's do another example suppose you so, are um, given yes hello yes. i'd like to know how did you get the e to the power u We remember we let u to be this function, the inner function. We said u is equal to 30x squared plus 10x minus 2, right? And then if u is yes. this function and we were given our function is f equals e to the power 30x squared plus 10x minus 2. If this is u, that means we can write this function as in e to the power u, because we know this is this is u. Okay, ma'am, thanks. All right. Um, I oh, I also have a question. If you can just go back, please. Um, your answer there, mm -hmm. um, the latest, the last answer, where it's e to the power of u, where it's been um, where we've substituted um with a 30x squared plus 10x minus 2. Um, I just want to ask in terms of the brackets, it's important to have the bracket there. If it is without the bracket, would the answer be wrong? 
if you what? If I if I had um, chosen the answer e to the power um, open bracket city x squared plus ten x minus two. If say for, for instance the um, the options for the answer is without the brackets, would it be wrong? If you don't write the brackets here. Yeah, yeah. For e to the power, that's correct. Like if you write that as in e to the power thirty x squared. Yeah. Plus ten x minus two minus two then times and then um plus ten e, yes yes it's it's wrong because this means okay. this e to the power only multiply sixty x right it okay. means we have sixty x times this then everything plus ten okay. but we have sixty 60x plus 10, then mm -hmm. everything times e to the power that function. Okay, I got it. Thank you. All right. Uh, 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 suppose we have our function as f of x equals 1 over 30x squared plus 10x minus 2, right? Remember, we said we can write this using the laws of exponent as 30x squared plus 10x minus 2 to the power minus 1. Okay, this is our f at x if we apply the laws of exponent, right? You see, now we can compare this f at x and check which function we do we need to write that the, this f at x is in, in the form. We have x to the power n, we have e to the power x, we have lin, lin x. You see, x to the power n is the closest form if we compare all these functions to, to our f at x, we have x to the power n as the closest form, whereby we will say our n is minus one, right? Meaning we have to write this function as in, in this form. We said it must be a variable to the power and number, right? We have a number which is minus one. We have this function to the power minus one. And we said this should this must be a one variable. It should be a one variable, meaning we can introduce a new variable and let that new variable to equal to everything here. So that this function would be in this form, right? Okay, I let you to be the inner function, the new variable to be, 30x squared plus 10x minus 2, right? Meaning our new variable, our new function is f at x equals u to the power minus 1, right? Okay. We said after, after introducing a new variable, and writing the new var uh, the new and writing our function in terms of the new variable, then the next step is to use the chain rule. If f at x is given as in in this form, like a function of the a function, f prime at x would be the derivative of f with respect to the inner function times the derivative of the inner function with respect to x, right? We have we have u and f. We don't know the derivative of u and derivative of f. But for us to find f prime at x, we need the derivative of f with respect to u times the derivative of u with respect to x, right? We can now use our rule to find these two. If u is equal to 30x squared plus 10x minus 2, we can use our power rule to find f prime. 
and f prime if we're using our power rule will be 60x plus 10 right if um if f f at okay let me write this as f at u if f at u is equal to u to the power minus one we can use our power rule again here to to get f prime of u to differentiate f with respect to u and if we use our power rule here our f prime would be minus u to the power minus two right and remember we said on our last class we said we can write this as in minus one over u squared right okay so the next step is to take your, your, your um, this derivative and plot them back here and substitute them back here and if we do that that means our f prime at x would be we said um we have the derivative of u with respect to u, u the derivative of f with respect to to u and that, that is one minus one over u squared times the derivative of u with respect to x and that is 60x plus 10. And then after after here, you have to substitute your u back. Okay, this means we have minus sixty x plus ten over our u is we said our u was thirty x squared plus ten x minus two all squared. Okay, this is our f prime at x. If our f at x was one over 30x squared plus 10x minus two. Okay, any questions? Uh, good evening, Ms. Goma. Is that where it would end? Yes. So it would be incorrect for us to take out 10 as the common factor from the top and the bottom and then cancel it out. That would be incorrect. Remember, you, you have here, you, you have 30x squared plus 10x minus 2 all squared, right? And this this equals, uh, it's 30x squared plus 10x minus 2 times 30x squared plus 10x minus 2, right? Then the next step is simplify this bracket. So we have 30 times this, 30 times that, 30 times this. Again, you take 10x, you multiply everything in this bracket. You take minus two, you multiply everything in this bracket. So you, you can't take 10 here, right? Because you have everything to the power two and you, you, you don't know if, um, okay. You, you, you don't know the that the exactly the exact function here. You can't you, you can't you, you can't do that. The only thing you can do is to write this as in um, minus 60x over everything, then min plus minus 10 over everything. That's the only thing you can do here. Unless you, you solve this bracket out as I did here. Okay, you have to con uh, continue multiplying here and then you collect the like terms and then you put them back here. Then maybe you will find um, a common factor, which I don't know, I'm not sure because I didn't do all the, the multiplication here. I didn't simplify everything here in those brackets. 
but usually let's say when we get a question like this in the assignment or the exam we would have to take it that far to multiply it out so we can see if there is a common factor they they like I wouldn't give you a, a question we should like waste time like this. This will be your final answer. Because if you do the multiplication now, uh, like I'm not testing you on, on that. The only thing I'm testing you here is that you, you know which rules to use and can you use that rule? That's the only thing I'm testing here. I'm, I'm not testing what this algebra. So there's no need for you to simplify further here. OK, thank you. No problem. Hi, Ms. Gomo. Yes, hi. Uh, I want to know how many hours we have uh, in exam. Two hours, 30 minutes. Okay. Maybe you have um, 15 minutes early to log in. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, all right. No problem. Okay, let's do one more example here. Do we still have time? Yes. Okay. Uh, suppose we are given f at x is in the square root of 30 x squared plus 10 x minus 2, right? And remember last, last time on our that last class, we said we can write something like this, a function like this, as in 30x squared plus 10x minus 2 to the power a half. So this is our new f at x, right? Then the next step is to compare that function to, to this three function, x to the power n, e to the power n, lean, lean x. And the, the closest function here is e x to the power n. Right, meaning your n is equal to half, and then you should write this function to be in a form of one, just as in one variable. So we introduce this variable, which is u. We let u to be 30x squared plus 10x minus 2, right? And your new f at x is u to the power a half, right? And then he said, okay, then the next step is to use the chain rule. Chain rule will be f prime at x will equal the derivative of u times the derivative of u with respect. We said your u is equal to 30x squared plus 10x minus 2. You use your um, the power rule there, then your u prime will be 30x squared plus 10x. Oh, your u prime will be 60x plus, plus 10. This is our u prime, right? And we said our, our, our f is equal to u to the power a half. Again, we can use our chain, our power rule here to get f prime which is the derivative, the derivative of the derivative of f with respect to u. The derivative of f with respect to u here it would be one over two u to the power minus one over two. Right? And we can write this as in one over one over two u to the power a half, but we know anything to the power a half, we can write that as in one over two square roots of u, right? This is our the derivative of f with respect to u. Then the next step is to take the, your derivatives and substitute them back here. 
Okay, we said f prime at x is equal to the derivative of f with respect to u, which is 1 over 2 root u times the derivative of u with respect to x is 60x plus 10. Then the next step, you substitute back u. And if you do that, you should have 60x plus 10 over 2 square roots of 30x squared plus 10x minus 2. This is your f prime at x. If you were given that function, which is the square root of 30x squared plus 10x minus 2, this will be your derivative of that function. Do we have any more questions? Yes, no. Okay. Uh, let's 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 move on to another rule, which is the product rule. Okay. This rule, you know that some function may be given in, in, in the form of two or more product function, right? So if you are given your function as in the, the, the product of two or more functions, then you are asked to differentiate your function, right? That means you have to use a product rule. For example, suppose you are given your function f at x, or y, as in the product of two functions. First function is u at x, then the next function is v at x. If you are given your function as in, in this form, that, okay, if you are given a function in this form, that means you have to use a product rule. The product rule says, okay, you have two function, function one, and function two. The product rule says the derivative of this function, which is f prime at x, will be it will, it will equal to the derivative of the inner of the of the first function. The first function is u. The derivative of u is u prime, right? So we have u prime at x times v as in the function v plus the, der the derivative of the second function times their first function as it is. So it means we have plus u at x times we differentiate the second function, right? So this means f prime at x, the product rule will be, we differentiate the first function, we keep the, the second function as it is. Then plus we keep the first function as it is, we differentiate the second function as it is. Or another thing, you can write this function as in, uh, suppose you are given your function as y equals u at x times v at x. You can write this as in f prime at x the derivative of u with respect to, to x, then times u as it is. Plus, oh, this is v times plus u as it is times the derivative of v with respect to x. Okay, let's let's do an example here. Suppose we are given our function as in f at x. How come I'm not going to move us? The screen is like x times. Lean, lean x, right? Suppose we are given our function in this form. You see, we, we have our function as a product of two function. Function one is e to the power x and function two is lean to the power x. We said if we have a, a product of two function, we need to use a product rule. Okay, I will let the first function to be e to be e x and then the second function to be lean x. Okay, I'll let the function to be u at x. u at x, we said it's the first function, which is e x, right? 
Then we have the second function, our vice the function is V at X. And the function, which is V at X is lin of lin of X, right? We said if we have something like this, if, okay, our, our function right now is U at X, V at X. We said the product rule for this function would be F prime at X would be um, U prime at X times the second function, which is VX, plus U at X times the derivative of the second function, which is V prime at X. Okay, we know that our U at X Okay, we, we here we need u prime at x, v at x, u at x and v prime at x. But for now, we only know v at x and u at x, meaning we need to find u prime at x and v prime at x, right? From, from our u and v. Okay, we have u at x equals e at x. We need to find u prime at x, okay? If we differentiate e, e at x, that function remains the same, meaning the derivative of this function will be the same as that or function. So our u prime at x is e to the power x, right? Okay, we said we need v prime at x too. We'll get v prime at x from v at x. We said v at x is equal to lin, lin x, right? Okay, we said the derivative of lean something like lean function, lean of x is one over everything that is in the bracket, which is x, right? So now we have u, we have, we have u prime and v, and we have u and v prime. Then the next step is to substitute all these back to here. So this means our f prime at x, which is u prime at x times v at x plus u at x times v prime at x will be, okay, we have our u prime as in e to the power x, but we have our v as in lin x plus we have our u at x as in e to the power x and we have our v prime as in 1 over x. So this means this is our final function f prime at x. If f at x is given as in this function e x lin x, the derivative of this function e x lin x is equal to e x lin x plus e x times one over x. Do we have questions? Yeah. Yes, no. Okay. Would you leave that answer like that? Yeah, you can leave this answer like this or can you write this as in um, EX lin, lin X plus EX over X. You can leave it here or you leave it here. Depend on the options you have there on the multiple choice. So taking out the common factor will, will will definitely not be something that will be you, done you when can, we are doing any of the rules. You you can take out the common factor. It's, it's still okay. If if there is this option, you can leave your answer here. If there is this option, you leave your answer here. If there is this option, then you choose this one. This any. It won't have the three of them. Okay. Okay. Um. Let's let's move on to another example. Suppose we are given our function as in. 
f at x equals um thirty x squared plus ten x times three x plus plus two. Right? Remember, you, you can simplify this this bracket. And if you simplify this bracket, you will have 90x cubed plus 60x squared plus 30x squared plus 20x. And then you simplify this, you collect the like terms. This will give you 90 x cubed plus 90 x squared plus plus 20. You can do this. You can simplify this function and get this. And then from here, you can use the power rule, right? But if, if you were told that you have to use a product rule here, that means you need to let this bracket to be the first function and then you let this bracket to be the second function. Okay, suppose they said we should use a product rule here. Okay, meaning we let u at x to be 30 x squared. You, you've been making noise and I've been patient with you. Can you just mute your mic? That's the only thing you need to do when you get here. You only have one assignment. So you mute your mic. Do doozy. Oh. oh, sorry. Sorry about that. Man. We have u at x equals 30x. But x squared plus plus 10x and you said that, that the second bracket would be our second function so we let our second function to be v at x and v at x is that oh it's 3x plus plus 2 right okay we have these two function meaning we have our f at x as in u at x times v at x and we said if we have a product function a product of two function that we use a product rule to get the derivative so find the derivative of that function and the derivative of this function will be f prime at x using the, the product rule um thus the derivative of this function would be u prime at x times v at x plus we differentiate the second function we keep the first function so it's plus u at x times u prime at x right we have we have u and, and v but to to use the, the the product rule we need u prime and v prime but we can get these two from these two right okay and you see, this is it's just a polynomial, meaning we can use our power function, right? Our power rule. Okay, let's use our power rule here to get u prime at x, right? If we differentiate this function using the power rule, we'll have 60x plus 10, right? And then we have this function. Again, we can use the power rule here. Our v prime would be... Um, we have 3x plus 2. 3x plus 2, if we differentiate that, the derivative of 3x is 3. The derivative of 2, 2 is a constant, it's 0, right? So we have, we now have u, u prime, v, v prime. The next step is to simplify, is to substitute those back here. And if we do that, we have u prime as in 60x plus 10. Right, and our v is three, right? Plus our u, our oh, our v, uh, our v is three x, three x plus two, right? And our our u, our u is thirty x squared plus ten x, right? 
that's our V prime is three. Then, if if this answer is not there on the on on, on the possible answers, you simplify further, right? We have 60, we have this bracket times this bracket. There are no powers, meaning it would be easy for you to simplify it. Then we have this bracket times three. Just multiply everything inside by three. And then you check if that answer is there on, on, on the possible solution. If it's not there, try to simplify it further until you find uh, that answer, one of the answers there. If you did, um, that your derivative right, differentiating right, then your answer should be there if you simplify or, yeah. Do we have questions from here? Yes, uh, I wanted to ask here, um, do we only times three, three with 30x plus 10 and not with the 10, 60x plus 10? Yes. Okay. See, thank there's, you. There's, we we have an operating sign here, a plus sign. Okay. Thank you. So, meaning we only add everything after after this positive, after this plus sign. Multiply these two, then we add everything that is here. But everything that is here, it's a bracket times. That bracket is it's multiplied by three, meaning we have to multiply everything inside this bracket by three. Okay, thank you so much. Right. Okay. Um suppose now we are given our function as in f at x equals 10 root x times lean lean x, right? Okay. You can you can write this as in 10 x to the power a half times lean lean x, right? And then you let this first function to be one variable, and then you let this to be the second function. You let u at x to be 10 x to the power a half. You let v at x to be lean lean x, meaning your f at x is now in the form of u at x times v at x. It's, it's the product of two functions, okay? To find the derivative of f at x, if f at x is equal to u at x times v at x, your f prime at x, the derivative of f would be u prime at x times v at x plus u at x times v prime at x, right? And if if u is equal to 10 to the power half, u prime would be 5x to the power minus 1 over 2, which is the same thing as 5 over root, root x, right? And your v, your v at x is equal to lean x, meaning your v prime at x would be one over x. Then you substitute your u prime v, u v prime back. Then you simplify further if you have to. Yeah, that's how you solve such questions. Okay, we only have 20 minutes. Let's do the last rule, which is the quotient rule. Okay, suppose, okay, we said the next rule is the quotient rule. Suppose we are given our function as in the quotient of two functions, meaning your function, it has the denominator and the numerator. Okay, we have your function as in the quotient of two functions, or your function is, has the numerator and the denominator function. 
the quotient rule says if you are given a function in this form, the, co the quotient rule will equal to f prime at x would be, okay, you differentiate that this function, the, uh, the, the numerator. If you differentiate the numerator, you'll get u prime at x, right? Then you keep the denominator, right? Now, the next step, you subtract, you subtract, you differentiate the denominator, you keep the numerator. Then everything, <coughs> everything over the, 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 the denominator squared, right? Okay, you see, with the product rule, with a product rule, you can start with any function. You can say maybe you differentiate this function, then you keep this function, then you add, you differentiate this function, then you keep this function. You'll get the same answer if you give, differentiate this first, you keep this, then you add, you differentiate this, then you keep this. You see, you'll get the same answer. But with the with the quotient rule, you just have to be careful. You can't do that because of this minus. So you have to make sure with the quotient rule, you always differentiate the upper function. Then you keep the lower function. Then you subtract, you differentiate the lower function. Then you keep the 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 upper function. Everything over the lower function squared. All right. Okay. Let's 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 do an example here. Suppose we have our f at x as in f at x equals three x squared plus two x squared over x squared plus 2x plus 1. You see, if, if we simplify this function, our new function will still have the, the, up, the upper function and the lower function. We'll still have the numerator and the denominator. So they, there's no need here of simplifying this function. We just have to use the quotient rule, right? The quotient rule is, okay, you, as if you are given your function as in the upper function and the lower function, then your quotient rule will be the derivative of this, you keep this, minus the derivative of this, you keep this. Okay, let's, let, let's name, uh, let's rename these two functions, right? You said um, we have the upper function, which is this and the lower function, which is this. Let's let our upper function to be u x to be three x squared plus two x squared. And we let the lower function to be b at x. V at x would be x squared plus two x plus one, right? We have u at x, v at x. We now have our function as in f at x equals u at x and v at x. We said if we have something like this, a function in this form, the form of the upper function divided by the lower function. If we are asked to find the derivative of that function, we have to use the quotient rule. Okay, to use the quotient rule, we need u prime v, v prime and u, right? And v squared. We only have we only have u and v, right? But we can find our u from our u prime from u, and we find our v prime from from v, right? Okay, we have our u as in three x plus two x. Okay, our u is, is we are given our u as in the polynomial function. Meaning, if we want to find the derivative of this, we can simply use, you can use the power rule, right? The power rule of differentiation. Okay, if we use power rule, we'll have 
u prime equals 6x plus um oh ask this this is this is three let me write three here oh it can be anything because if it's like this i can just add this two no? so let me write three so we have our u at x is in three 3x cubed plus 2x. If our u at x is this, we use the, the power rule to find its derivative. And if we apply the power rule here, we'll have 9x squared plus 4x, right? Again, we have u, v, we need to v prime. We, up, we can apply the power rule again here since this is the polynomial. And if we apply the power rule here to get the derivative of this, we'll have v prime and x equals 2x plus plus 2. Okay, we have u v u prime v prime. And we said our f prime at x would be u prime times v minus u times v prime over v squared right we have we have our u prime as in um 9x squared plus 4x 9x squared plus 4x right but our v is to, is x squared x squared plus 2x plus 1 right? Everything minus u times v prime. Our u, we said our u is 3x squared plus 2x squared, right? This is our u. We multiply u with u v prime. Our v prime is 2x plus 2. So we multiply everything with 2x plus 2, right? Then Everything it's three x cubed. It's it's what? It's it's minus x to the part three x cubed. Three x cubed. The u yes. Oh yeah, thank you. Three x okay. cubed over. Uh, we said v squared, and our v is. Uh, 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 x squared plus 2x plus 1. So we have everything over x squared plus 2x plus 1. And this is raised to the power 2. Right? The next step is to simplify. If the if this answer is not there on, on the possible solution, you can simplify further. Right? Yeah. That's how you will apply the question rule. Okay, let's let's do another example. Suppose we are given our function as in f at x equals one over one plus e to the power x over two x squared plus three x. Right? We let this to be there uh, our upper function, which is u at x. Right? And we let this to be the lowest function to be v at x. Okay. Remember, we need u prime and v prime. If if u at x is equal to 1 plus e to the power x, we need to find u prime at x. Right? If we differentiate this here on 1, we can, uh, okay, we differentiate this and then we differentiate this. Right, the derivative of one, which is a constant, is zero. Right, but the derivative of e to the power x is e to the power x, meaning we have zero plus e to the power x, which is e to the power x. This is this is your u prime. Okay, we said our 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 v at x is equal to two x squared plus 
3x, right? We need to find V prime at x. V prime at x, we use, we can find U prime, V prime at x by using um, the power rule of the derivative. And if we do that, you will find 4x plus 3. Then the next step is to substitute everything on a prime at x. Um, it's u prime at x times v at x minus v, u at x times v prime at x. Everything over v at x all, all squared. Okay, we have we have u prime, we have v, we have u, we have v prime. You substitute everything, then everything over v to the power two. Then you simplify. If you have to simplify, yeah. Again, if maybe you were given this function, you were asked to, to, to differentiate this function. We have f at x equals e to the power 2x over lin, lin x, right? Okay, you identify your, your u and v. You say u equals e to the power 2x and v equals lin, lin x. If u equals e to the power 2x, you need u prime. u prime would be 2 e to the power 2x. And if your v is equal to lin x, your v prime would be 1 over x. Right. Okay. Again, if, if your f was, if you have f at x equals maybe, e to the power 2x over lin 3x, right? We have something like this. Okay, you identify your u and v. You have u equals e to the power 2x. You have v equals lin, lin 3x. If your u is equal to e to the power 2x, your u prime would be 2 e to the power 2x. If your v is equal to lin 3x, your v prime will be 3 over x. Is it 3 over x? Because it's um, 1 over 3x times 3. Oh, it's so it's just, okay, you have lin this, you have 1. one 1 over 3x times 3. So this means this is 1, 1 over x. So we have we have 1 over x. Yes. Then you substitute them back to your equation to 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 your quotient rule. Okay? If you have f at x equals x over 3x squared plus 4, you let u equals x, v equals 3x squared plus 4. Then you need u. If u is equal to x, then your u prime would be 1. If v is equal to 3x squared plus 4, your v prime is 6x. Then you substitute this back to your question. Do we have any more questions? Yes, no. Okay, I guess not. Uh. Can you can you please go back to 